Welcome everyone to the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage and I am posting a, uh, another video of the Singer 301. This is uh, kind of interesting for me because the very first machine I ever restored uh, almost 10 years ago now was a Singer 301 and uh, a lot, you can find a lot of information about these machines online. I'm going to be posting this machine for sale soon you'll see it listed and you'll see a long itemized list of all the things I did to the machine in order to get it uh, basically to give it a full overhaul and restoration as I call it. Whenever you look for vintage sewing machines occasionally you'll see something listed and the seller might say this machine has been tuned up or this machine has been serviced and that's great uh, but you do want to follow up and ask them for maybe to provide you a list of things that were done to the machine. And that's uh, not to question them, but just to make sure you know what has been done and what might need to be done before the machine is fully uh, considered ready to, to work for you. As I've mentioned before, unlike industrial vintage machines, which often have parts that are literally worn out, a lot of domestic or home sewing machines from the vintage era are not actually worn out. Very often uh, they have gone without service. You know, real machines made of you know, all metal machines like these, they require servicing just like automobiles. And uh, many of them over, over their lives have basically gone without service. And if they were in use constantly, they uh, they sometimes would tolerate that a little bit. They still needed to be oiled and cleaned. But when something has been um, not used for a long time, it really requires going through. And so just to give you a few examples, uh, the bobbin case and the, the uh, hook area were cleaned uh, and uh, a little bit of lubrication applied there. Uh, the entire uh, drivetrain underneath was cleaned and relubricated the motor had its brushes inspected, cleaned, the commutator where the brushes rest on as the machine runs has been cleaned. The bearing to the motor has been re-greased. Uh, of course, the upper uh, drivetrain was uh, fully lubricated, as was uh, access to the side door here. And again, I spent a, a quite a lot of time cleaning machines. You'd be surprised at how much dust and old old sewing machine oil that builds up on them over the years. Uh, and so there's, there's a lot of time uh, spent with that. Then I will disassemble the tension assembly, which is the, the little dial or knobs that you see here where the thread goes through, just to remove any oxidation or old, uh, some people mistakenly squirt oil in here, which you're really not supposed to do. Um, and maybe remove any uh, thread scraps that might have been caught in there. There's all sorts of things that can find their way into the tension assembly. And <clears throat> because the Singer tension assemblies were so well made, they can literally be disassembled and then reassembled once they've been cleaned. Uh, I have inspected, and of course I think this one I installed a new light bulb. One of the things I love about Singers is that virtually all of the parts can either be replaced with original vintage parts or with new reproductions. And so, for example, the soft parts of the machine, like the bobbin winder tire, uh, these often dry rot over time. They're, they're made of rubber. And so it has a new replacement that is uh, the exact size for it, the appropriate size. Uh, this machine has received a brand new power cord and a foot pedal cord. Let's see, the, um, the hand wheel, of course, was removed. Uh, and the gears were re-greased. And so where appropriate, I have used grease. Where appropriate, I've used sewing machine oil. And then I've done testing, and I've done uh, what I call sewing off, which is where I, I test uh, for the quality of the stitch, tension, etc. And again, this whole process, uh, when it's done properly, takes quite a few hours to do. And I always remind uh, people that once you have a machine that has been fully overhauled, all of the things that I've mentioned to you are really not required uh, uh, for you as a sewer. Maintaining one of these machines once it's been restored is pretty simple. You simply clean the feed dog area, which I went in and did, 
but you want to do that occasionally with a with a lint brush. Um, keep your needles. Uh, replace this as a brand new uh, home sewing needle, and uh, you want to oil the machine before each project. And what I love about many of the vintage machines is you don't have to guess where that is. They actually have little oiling points for you, and so. <clears throat> they are wonderfully simple to maintain and the quality of the stitch, particularly on the 301, the Featherweight, um, and the 201, all Singer rotary hook machines have what I consider to be some of the most beautiful stitches ever. Now, many of you sew on machines that have oscillating hooks, and so do I for that matter, and they make wonderful stitches, but... Um, for some people, they want a certain uh, look to a stitch, and the rotary hooks are particularly good at doing very short stitches on fabric. So the Singer 301, again, launched, you've heard me say this many times, it was launched in 1951 to celebrate Singer's 100th anniversary, and it was state-of-the-art. Like the Singer Featherweight, it has all high-quality steel drivetrain and gears, but the chassis and the body were aluminum and that made it lightweight uh, and it was truly portable. One of the only vintage machines that anyone in their right mind could call portable. Uh, because most of, the, most of the machines from the past that were made of steel and iron are quite heavy. But this machine has the featherweight, Singer featherweight bobbin case and bobbin system. And so it's no surprise that it makes a stitch very much like a featherweight. Uh, featherweights are wonderful. I have restored and sold many of them over the years. The 301 provides uh, essentially a more powerful motor, a wider harp or throat space, depending on what you call this, the space between the needle and the support body of the machine, uh, or the pillar of the machine. You have, of course, uh, reverse, which is all the way up. You have stitch length control, and I'll start down here with a long stitch length. And then, of course, you can you can make one of one of those beautiful Singer short stitches, one of the shortest, finest stitches I've ever seen on any sewing machine. And uh, but anyway, this machine is uh, ready to sew. It has been fully gone through, and I'm going to demonstrate. I've already tested the stitching, but I'm going to demonstrate and let you let you see the machine running. Uh, and cut some of my little little. <clears throat> thread tails there. Anyway, I wanted you folks to see the machine run, see the kind of stitches she makes, and uh, if you have any comments or would like to subscribe to my channel, please do, um, and, and share your own opinions about the Singer 301 if you like. Notice how slow I can get the uh, needle speed. That's one of the great features of Singers. You guys have heard me um, uh, talk about what I love about that. And then, of course, you can also you can uh, rev her up pretty fast if you are uh, a sewer who can who can pull that off. Then I'll shorten the stitch length <clears throat> and. Do uh, some rows of that wonderful short stitch that the Singer Rotaries are known for. And of course, she can back tack. <clears throat> so let's see. I've got quite a few rows of stitches here, guys, but I wanted you to see, and hopefully, there we go, nice natural light. You can just see the quality of the stitches, and those short ones particularly are just wonderful. And then quite a few rows of the other, uh, there's the bobbin thread. Let's see if I can get it to focus right. It doesn't look like it's, there we go. That's better. Um, and again, this is one of many of the great machines that Singer produced. Singer in its long history had many awesome and great machines. This one I think particularly uh, excels with light and medium weight fabrics. There are people who will sew heavy fabrics with it. The motor is quite strong. I personally think that it, it really is happiest 
in sewing uh, garment weight fabrics. That's one of the things it does just beautifully. And of course, those of you who are quilters, many of you have used the 301 and, and love its stitching capabilities as well. Um, and again, Singer had a few models that were, were not as coveted, but this is one of those that is considered one of their greatest machines. And of course, <clears throat> the slant shank design and the motor design uh, were kept when they moved to the 400 series, the 500 series, which were all called slantomatics. Uh, they used a different bobbin. That's where they used the drop down uh, or the 66 bobbin. But again, uh, just a wonderful legacy of great sewing machines from their vintage era. And so, uh, again, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, share any comments or, or um, feedback you might have. And uh, I appreciate you watching. Thanks, folks.